Okay, so this is a recipe that's been uh, going around a little bit. Uh, Jennifer is who I got it from. I won't mention the last name because I don't know if she wants me to. So, but anyway, we will. Uh, I'm gonna. This is kind of my rendition on it. Everybody has their own little take on it. So, anyway, we're gonna try and come up with a blue or a purple wine at the end. That's the goal. So, we're gonna use uh, these butterfly pea tea bags. And we're going to throw in some grape juice just for some body and flavor because I hear that these are uh, not very flavorful. And uh, we also got some blue Kool-Aid. We'll try and throw some of that in there. And I'm going to use EC1118 yeast. I've got a yeast starter over here going for it. Uh, we'll also put in some yeast energizer, some potassium metabisulfite, and some yeast nutrient just because there's not a whole lot of nutrients in the in the tea itself some people use bananas raisins um, I'm going to use the juice and the yeast nutrient some say that the acid in the juice is going to change the color um, so that's kind of my reasoning behind the blue kool-aid and then uh, we'll give it a sample at the end once it's finished and if we don't like the way it tastes, we'll uh, we'll adjust that in the, at the end with some maybe some blueberry syrup or you know we'll figure something out. So anyway, we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and add the tea bags in here. Uh, most of the recipes I see in were for one gallon batches, and they're using like ten tea bags. Um, but I figure if you're going to take the time to make one batch, you might or a one gallon batch, you might as well do a five gallon batch, if uh, if you got the stuff to do it. So we're just going to go ahead and do a five gallon batch. So we're going to throw in this whole bag, which has 30 of them in there, and uh, I'm going to let that steep for a little bit, and I'll see what the color is, and if we need to, we'll uh, add some more. But uh, we're going to let that steep for a little bit, and then we'll be back. I uh, forgot to mention I put two gallons of water in here and then we'll put uh, like two and a half gallons because we'll have the grape juice and stuff in our bucket. So, uh, but I was starting out with two gallons of water. Okay, so while that's uh, steeping, I got some sanitizer in here. I use uh, Star Sand and I'm just going to shake it up, make sure it touches all surfaces inside the bucket here. And we'll let that sanitize while we're steeping our tea up. Okay, also while that's steeping, we're gonna I've got my bucket ready to go. Um, I'm gonna add five cans of I'm gonna add five cans of white grape juice. Um, just one per gallon is kind of what I figured, just to kind of boost the flavor up. So uh, We'll just open that up and dump it down in there and uh, put it, I rinse it out with some water. You're going to be adding water to it anyway, so you might as well get everything that's in the container out. And then we'll just add all five of those down inside there. Here's the tea bag steeping. I don't know if you guys can see it too well, but you can see that blue color starting to come out in it. Um, I don't think it's going to be dark enough so I'm going to go ahead and add the other bags of tea. Okay so I added the other 10 bags. I added 10 more bags so we're up to 40 bags of tea. Um, it's got a real nice blue color to it. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it there at, at 40 bags. So. We'll see how it comes out from there. Okay, so we've got our grape juice down in there. Now we're going to add a cool water to it. We're going to bring it. We're going to add uh, three more gallons of water to it. So we'll have a total volume of just over five gallons. Because remember, we have two gallons in the pot. So we'll put three gallons down in here. Well, about two and a half gallons down in here. Because we've got the liquid from the grape juice. We want to come just above five, the five gallon mark. So I'll continue to add the water. Okay, so I pulled off a little sample of the tea. Uh, give you a little shot of what it looks like there. 
nice blue nice blue color um, I've heard it doesn't have much flavor I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just give it a sample see what it tastes like yeah there's a little faint flavor of I don't know what it tastes like but uh, it's not horrible it's just not it's pretty flavorless mostly is why we're using that is for the color okay so we let it steep for about 20 minutes uh, you've seen the color of it uh, I'm just gonna let it sit here and cool for a little bit and then we'll uh, add it into our bucket okay now well, it's still hot you want to add your sugar to it uh, this is 10 cups um, we're gonna do 20 cups which is really close to 10 pounds of sugar so this will be half of it and then we'll, I'll add the other half as well and mix it in good we want to do this way it's still hot it will help cool it off and uh, it'll help melt the sugar get it all dissolved in there really well so I'll go ahead and add the other 10 cups of sugar and then we'll let it cool okay so we've got our tea up here that we steeped it's cooled off now so we're gonna go ahead and dump it down here in the bucket hopefully you'll be able to see this color and as we add it in there it turns purple it looks like I have heard that if you change the pH that it turns purple so it looks like we're going to have a purple wine instead of a blue wine. Okay, so I pulled the sample off. As you can see, it's uh, like a violet purple color. So that's going to be interesting. Anyway, that's what it's going to look like. Okay, so we're going to pull a sample off and take a reading, see where we're at, see if we need to add any more sugar or anything. We're at 1085, so we're just going to leave it right there, and uh, we'll add a few things to it. Okay, so to this we're going to add uh, two teaspoons of yeast nutrient. This will just help feed the yeast. And then uh, we're going to add one teaspoon of yeast energizer as well, just to help the yeast get going. Stir that up, get some oxygen in there, give it a good stir here. And I haven't decided if I'm going to add the Kool-Aid yet or not. Uh, we're going to wait until after fermentation, see what it looks like then. Uh, maybe give it a sample then. So we'll check it out after primary fer fermentation. Okay, and then uh, not adding any metabisulfite this time because uh, we just steeped it, so it should be good. I'm going to go ahead and pitch my yeast starter. This is a Lavalin EC1118. Okay, and then we'll just cover it and put an airlock on it and let it ferment. We'll come back and check on it in a day or two. Okay, here's our butterfly PT wine. I've got a sanitized spoon here. Um, we're just going to move everything around in here. It's been 24 hours since we pitched the yeast. Um, we just want to make sure all this stays moist so we don't get any mold growing. 
Um, with these tea bags, I'll probably pull them out tomorrow on this wine. But as you can see, it's a nice purple color. So we'll uh, stir this up a little bit. And then uh, we'll come back and check on it again in 24 hours. So I'll just uh, re-sanitize the lid and put it back on there. And we'll be back in 24 hours. Okay, the Butterfly Tea Wine. Uh, as you can see, the airlock is uh, bubbling away. This is day two of after we pitch the yeast. Let me go ahead and uh, get that lid off and we'll take a peek. Okay, so there's a look inside the Butterfly Pea Wine. Um, we're going to go ahead and punch these tea bags down again and uh, just keep them moist. This is uh, day two of fermentation. Got to switch hands here. I'm... It's fermenting away. As you can see, it's releasing CO2. So it's just doing good. It's just plugging away. Nice color to it. So we'll just replace the lid back on there and uh, we'll come back and check on it again tomorrow. Here we are, day four of the Butterfly PT wine that we're making. Um, I've already unsnapped the lid. We'll give it a stir, see what we're looking like. Looks like uh, fermentation starting to slow down a little bit in this one. So we're going to take a hydrometer reading tomorrow on this one. And we'll probably remove the, the tea bags at that time. And uh, maybe even transfer it to a carboy. Okay, so there's a peek at how we're going, and uh, we'll come back and check on it again tomorrow. I'll just snap the lid back on and uh, let her go till tomorrow. Okay, so it's day five of uh, the PT wine, the Butterfly PT. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove the tea bags. I'll uh, pull those out, and then we'll be back. Okay, so I've removed all of the tea bags. As you can see, it's uh, still fermenting pretty hard. So we're just going to cover it back up and uh, let it sit till tomorrow. Okay, as you can see, the airlock is slowed down on the uh, Butterfly PT wine. So uh, I've moved it up onto a table here, and we'll take a peek inside. Um, it's ready to be racked into a carboy. Nice uh, purple color to it. Um, so. I'll go ahead and get uh, everything sanitized and ready to go. Okay, so we're going to use the uh, all-in-one wine pump. Um, so we've got our tube going in. We'll uh, put that down into our wine here. Put that one down into our wine. And then uh, put this one down into our sanitized carboy here. Make sure the bung is nice and tight in there so we can create a suction. Uh, and then we'll just flip the switch on here and it should start going here in just a second once it builds up some uh, suction. And there it goes. And now it's just racking down into the carboy. So I'll let that continue to rack and then we'll be back. Okay, so here is the Butterfly PT wine, all uh, racked up in the secondary carboy. Uh, nice, pretty purple color there. Um, so we'll just move that down into the uh, closet over here and we'll let that continue to ferment and age. So we'll check back with it in uh, probably three or four weeks. All right, cheers, guys.